Okay, welcome back uh, after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were we began studying chapter seven, um, uh, dreams and visions. Uh, there's a question from Akash Thomas, and he says, um, "How to preach to congregation? Uh, how about avoiding uh, movies? Because if we say you can watch movies for knowledge and etc., et they watch all kind of." Uh, movies okay so basically um, you know uh, uh, it's important that uh, you know don't preach um, don't tell people don't watch something or don't do something because then they will be more inquisitive and you know they would want to go and do it or uh, you know find out why you know I think it's important to uh, teach people and train people in 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 uh, you know in what they should be doing and engaging in um, and what is profitable and what is useful and how to engage that time usefully and profitably to you know build their lives to build the kingdom of God what is the kingdom mandate what is their calling and how also time is important and how we are accountable to God for the time that we uh, spend. So instead of telling them what they shouldn't be doing or watching, what they should be doing can be more uplifting, encouraging, uh, because that will get them to, you know, work for themselves and say, hey, you know, I don't, I, this is what I heard. This is what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I think God is telling me I need to use my time wisely. So how can I use my time wisely? Okay. Uh, but if in case you are encountered by people who ask you, you know, uh, should we watch movies or we shouldn't be watching movies, then, you know, you can uh, talk about Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, where I said, you know, uh, Paul tells, you know, uh, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and admirable and excellent or praiseworthy think about such things so then you should teach them on each of these things you can take each of these things each week and you know uh, preach on these things teach them and then that will help them to for themselves to discern to know to choose activities which is um, right also if you want to specifically speak on movies to people you can also speak on how movies and media and media can have such a powerful impact and shape the thoughts attitudes and uh, behaviors of people for better or for uh, worse and uh, you know um, teach them about uh, you know that uh, Paul says we have the mind of Christ uh, and so uh, the mind of Christ means what and what should be allowed in our hearts and uh, minds also if you want to address about knowledge versus ent entertainment you can also do that you know you can talk about what is knowledge what is entertainment and uh, say not all movies are created equal uh, they might contain some messages uh, and some uh, visuals that are not God honoring, uh, uh, not morally right according to biblical standards and values. And also you can um, highlight, you know, or uh, the need to for them to evaluate uh, movies uh, critically, you know, considering the theme, the message, the values it uh, presents. And ask them, uh, tell them to ask themselves these questions. Does these movies promote values that align with the teaching of Jesus or uh, you know does it uh, portray uh, you know relationships morality um, and how does it portray relationships morality and uh, and uh, talks about God and is it edifying our spiritual uh, growth our spirit man or is it going to be harmful to our spiritual growth and our spirit man so you need to teach them to think um, uh, critically encourage discernment that they need to have and also share personal examples of how you know people have uh, indulged in media and how it has kind of uh, become a stronghold which is they're not able to get over does that help Akash Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Yes, Shani, you have your hand up. I just had a, in terms of, in terms of movies, you were explaining about it. Wouldn't the Lord just kind of reveal to people what they should and shouldn't watch 
anyway. You're saying that's in the Lord. Um, Just kind of reveal to people what you should and shouldn't watch anyway. Yes, he does. He speaks uh, to us, but sometimes, you know, uh, or often, we don't want to listen to what the Holy Spirit says. You know, we, we can, you know, counter that. That's what Satan uh, gets us to do, right? Counter that thought. He just puts an idea and a thought in our hearts and our minds. But, you know, uh, uh, that thought becomes an impression and then it becomes an argument, you know, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. You know, uh, you're, you're caught in a situation and you're thinking, hey, how do I get out of the situation? And suddenly, ding, ding, there's an idea that comes and says, you know, lie your way through. You know, just say a small lie. You lie your way through to get out of this situation. So that is just a thought that, an evil thought that, that Satan plants. You know, that's not from God because God does not lie. He does not, you know, tell us to do anything that is unrighteous. He leads the godly in righteous ways. Psalms 23 as well talks about that. And so then it's just a thought that comes into your mind. And the thought becomes an impression, an idea. And then you're saying, uh, yeah, and then an argument. In any ways, you know, it leads to an argument, like, Anyways, you know, it's just a small uh, lie. It will just get me out of this situation. Uh, it's not uh, something that has to do with life and death. It's not, a, a, you know, a big sin. And, and an argument can also lead to, you know, anyway, I'm going to go back to church on Sunday. I'll pray and take communion and ask God to forgive me of my sins, right? And then that, uh, that uh, argument becomes you know, uh, 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 something that it leads you into doing, getting into you into action. You're saying, okay, uh, you know, you're planning the whole thing in your mind. Okay. Uh, how am I going to do it? He's going to come or she's going to come. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm just going to get myself out of the uh, uh, situation. And you do do just that when, you know, the person comes you out of your situation, you're happy, you know, you're out, but then that can become like a, a stronghold in your mind. How does it become a stronghold? I'm just giving you an example. It can become a habitual liar, you know, for any and every situation. You know, you can lie and you can get yourself out and become a habitual liar. Okay, so your thought becomes an um, idea. Your idea becomes a uh, something that you act on. That, that action becomes your lifestyle and that eventually becomes your character or your habit okay and that is the same progression that we can see even uh, uh, in the bible you know uh, just a thought then an impression an argument uh, and, and becomes uh, something that you act on and becomes a stronghold uh, so how how do you overcome that you know uh, when that lie uh, that idea of lying comes you know an easy um, verse that you can defend it, defend it with the word of God. It's the word of God that this, you know, our weapon that we can use, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Just declare Psalm 23, you know, uh, uh, he leads me in, in ways of righteousness. This is not right. It's not what God is leading me to do. It's not what I should be doing. So yes, I'll have to say the truth. I'll get punished, but that's, that is it, you know? So, does that help answer your question, Shani? Yes, and just one, it's just, to, to me, it seems like there's really um, nothing to watch, none of this is Christian-based movies or television shows, because it seems like I, I found myself not watching shows I used to watch because they show women kissing, they show two men in a relationship. I stopped watching that. You go to Hallmark, they have men who are gay. I stopped watching that. It's like all these shows are, but you have somebody, now I think about some of the shows I watch, they may have people, a man and woman relationship, but they're living together. So it's like, to me, I'm just like, what is there really to watch? Mm -hmm. So that's what it's kind of boils, boils down to the man was saying, I think his name is Primo, he was saying that the pastor was saying, long as it doesn't get into your heart, because what is there to watch? Because there's nothing really, there's not a lot of Christian movies you know, in shows because now I'm thinking about like, hey, these people, they're not married, but they're living together. You know, that's not, that's not, that's not right either. So it's like, okay, there's really nothing. That's why I'm just, that's all I just want to say. Yes. So yeah, I don't know what yes. to watch. So yes. That's not edifying your spirit, man. So you can 
choose to watch Discovery Channel, History Channel. There's, uh, you know, shows that talk about uh, food, you know, so many different things that can enhance your knowledge. You can choose to watch those things. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on. Okay. Um, so God speaks to us through uh, dreams and through our dreams. We saw in Job chapter 33 that he imparts his instruction, guidance and direction uh, to keep us uh, from error. OK, now uh, dreams um, that God gives us, uh, he uses it to serve different purposes. Uh, God speaks to dreams. And so we'll just look at uh, the, the different reasons of what God can use our dreams uh, uh, and how he can what he uses our dreams to communicate to us. OK, so through dreams, God uh, can use uh, those dreams to meet us and encounter us. OK. Uh, we read that in, uh, we see uh, in case of Jacob in Genesis chapter uh, 28, he's fleeing from uh, Esau and, you know, uh, uh, he dreamt of that ladder, you know, connecting heaven and earth and angels descending and uh, ascending and descending. And God spoke to him, reaffirming the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and promising to bless Jacob and his descendants okay so uh through this dream jesus was based god was sorry god was just meeting him and encountering uh jacob and reiterating the uh, covenant promises that he had made to his uh, forefathers also another example we can see is in the life of solomon in first kings chapter 3 verses 5 to 15 you know god appeared to solomon in a dream at gibeon and he um you know, uh, asked him uh, to, you know, uh, to say whatever he desired. And Solomon asked for wisdom to govern the people of uh, Israel, to read the people of Israel. And God granted him the wisdom along with riches and honor. So how did it all come through? You know, it was through a dream. OK, God can also use dreams to encourage us. Uh, an example is in Acts chapter 18, verses 9 to 11. Uh, Paul is in a second missionary journey. He's at Corinth and at Corinth, he was facing a lot of opposition for preaching the gospel. And one night the Lord appeared to Paul in a vision and encouraged him, saying, you know, do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent for I am with you you and so we see that paul was greatly encouraged uh, he stayed in corinth for a year and a half and then he taught the word of god up there so you know god can use dreams to encourage us as well he can also use dreams to instruct and um, teach us uh, psalms chapter 16 verse 7 you know david acknowledges there that god gives him counsel in his heart and instructs him even at night uh, suggesting that you know dreams um, uh, and night vision serve as means uh, how god instructs us and we've also read from uh, job chapter 30 Three. Another good example that we can see is in the New Testament in Matthew chapter one, verse twenty. You know, um, uh, Joseph was uh, betrothed to Ma to Mary, and but he was considering to divorce her very quietly. Uh, uh, you know, because uh, he found out she was uh, with child, and in a dream, you know, the angel appeared to Joseph, instructing him to take Mary as his wife, uh, because the child that she was carrying was from the Holy uh, Spirit. So here is something that, you know, Joseph is getting an instruction uh, through the dream um, uh, that, you know, the angel speaks to him, okay? Uh, through dreams, God can also direct us and uh, guide us, okay? Um, now, uh, Joseph, another example of um, Joseph's life in Matthew chapter 2, you know, after the uh, uh, death of Herod, King Herod, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and instructs him to take Mary and Jesus, uh, you know, back to uh, Israel. And we see that Joseph obeys and he goes back to the land of Israel. Uh, we also see uh, in the life of Jacob in Genesis chapter 46, verses 1 to 4. Now, God speaks to Jacob in a vision, reassuring him not to fear, uh, but to go down to Egypt because he would make him a great nation. And, you know, eventually he would bring him uh, back. OK, uh, another example we can look at is what I've already stated in Acts chapter 16. You know, Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia. In 
in his dream, uh, telling him, pleading him to come and help them. And Paul and his uh, companions immediately set out for uh, Macedonia. So we see through these examples, you know, God can use dreams to direct us and guide us. He can also use dreams to reveal about future events, okay? A typical example would be Joseph. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Joseph uh, uh, dreamt uh, how, you know, uh, the the sun, moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to him. And also, uh, you know, his sheaves of grain, uh, uh, you know, the, sorry, the brothers sheaves of grain were bowing down to uh, him. And these dreams were basically foretelling uh, Joseph's uh, future that he would rise to power and that his family would, uh, you know, one day bow down uh, before him. And it happened been exactly just like he dreamt. Also, you know, in the case of uh, Joseph's life, we see that, you know, Pharaoh had this dream of uh, seven fat cows and seven thin cows and seven healthy grain, uh, years of grain, and uh, followed by seven, uh, you know, withered uh, years uh, uh, or, uh, you know, stock of uh, a stock with uh, healthy grain and a stock with uh, you know, uh, very feeble stock, weak li looking stock of grain. So um, he had this dream and it was basically God was speaking to this, uh, you know, unsaved king, what is going to happen in the future. And he was not able to, he knew that God is giving him this dream. It's something about the future. He was not able to understand it. His magicians, the wise people in his, uh, in his palace were not able to interpret the dream. So so, you know, they are, uh, Joseph was brought and so God gives Joseph the uh, wisdom and the interpretation for the dream. He says, the seven fat cows and the, uh, the, 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 the stock, the healthy looking stock of uh, uh, grains, uh, seven years of plenty, uh, and then the seven weak thin cows that uh, ate up or swallowed up the seven fat cows and the weak looking stock of grain that swallowed up the healthy uh, stock of grain, you know, he says is seven years of uh, famine. So he says, you know, God is saying that there will be seven years of plenty of abundance of harvest of grain and everything else, followed by seven years of harvest, which will be so bad that will kind of, you know, even eat up everything that was the, you know, that was plenteous in those uh, the seven previous years, and uh, 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 God also gives Joseph the 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 wisdom uh, to advise the king what to do. And so we see that Pharaoh appoints uh, Joseph to oversee the preparations, and he's made uh, you know like the prime minister of uh, Egypt. So uh, through these dreams, God was. Um, basically uh you know revealing future events even if you look at or read the book of daniel you know daniel had visions uh, daniel chapter 7 the four beasts uh, representing the four kingdoms you know foretelling uh you know the world history and uh, the ultimate uh, establishment of god's literal kingdom here on earth which is talking about the millennial rule of god's kingdom so the you know uh, the kingdom of god there are two dimensions uh, one is a spiritual dimension of the kingdom of God. The second dimension is the literal kingdom of the kingdom of God. Uh, when Jesus came, he initiated the spiritual aspect or the spiritual dimension of the kingdom of God, um, which is what we are living here today. That is why Jesus said the kingdom of God is in us. You know, you don't have to go looking for the kingdom of God, but it is in us. So he's talking about the spiritual dimension, but there'll be a time when he'll come back the second time and he will establish his literal kingdom and the saints uh, will uh, be part of his literal kingdom which is the millennium rule the thousand year millennium uh, rule and uh, this is something that god already spoke to daniel in visions foretelling his uh, the literal kingdom or god's eternal uh, kingdom also we see that you know um sorry We also see that God reveals secret things uh, uh, to us through, uh, uh, through dreams, okay? Uh, and uh, some examples that we can see in the Bible uh, is uh, in a dream, uh, you know, um, uh, 
what can I give you? Okay, Daniel, let's take Daniel's dream. Uh, uh, Daniel interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's uh, dream. Uh, so he reveals to King Nebuchadnezzar the mystery of his dream, uh, what he had uh, 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 seen, and you know what God is revealing him to do the seven years of abundance, the seven years of uh, famine. So uh, he was revealing it to him. Also, uh, you know, God through dreams corrects us and realigns us uh, to his will, to his plan and purposes if we have gone astray. Um, an example that we can look at from scripture is uh, Genesis chapter 20, where King Abimelech, you know, unknowingly took Sarah, Abraham's wife, uh, into his harem. And, uh, but, you know, God warned uh, him in a dream. So does God warn people who are unsaved? Yes, he does. He spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar. He spoke to uh, Abimelech. God warned him in a dream that he should not marry uh, uh, Sarah. And if he does, he would uh, die. Uh, and that he had to return her back to Abraham. And we see that Abimelech promptly obeys God and thus, you know, um, uh, 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 evades the uh, danger that was going to, uh, coming on his life or the impending danger that was going to come upon his life. Okay. Ma'am, can you please explain more about the... Okay, so Bhagya's question is, Ma'am, can you please uh, explain more about the kingdom of God in us? Can we pray in our daily prayers and let your kingdom come in us? Yes, uh, that is what God has asked us to pray. Uh, you know, uh, the kingdom mandate uh, uh, which God taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6, he asked us to pray, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven okay so uh, you will learn about the kingdom of god in the second year in the first semester it's a uh, you know a, a, a good course very powerful truths that you will learn in that course but just to tell you that the kingdom of god is now um, we are living in the spiritual dimension spiritual aspect the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is in us and through us Wherever we go, the kingdom of God, uh, we carry it because the kingdom of God is in us. So any situation, any environment, any place that we go, anywhere that God has placed us, whether it's our job, um, it's the areas that we live, or even if we move to various cities, a local church, wherever, the kingdom of God is carried through us. So we, as kingdom citizens as sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, as uh, heirs of God, as co-heirs uh, uh, with Jesus Christ, you know, we have been given kingdom authority and kingdom power. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, says in Matthew that, you know, uh, the keys of the kingdom has been given to you. Keys signifies authority. So we have been given authority uh, to extend God's kingdom here. Okay. Uh, how do we know that? Because, um, uh, you know, uh, when, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion to subdue uh, the earth. But when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they gave over the dominion, that authority to Satan. Um, and, um, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, you know, how do we know that Satan has an authority? Because in in in, in Luke chapter 4, uh, you know, uh, the temptation, uh, Satan tells uh, Jesus, you know, all authority has been given to me and I will give you that authority to rule over the earth. Who gave him that authority? It was not God. It was given to Adam and Eve uh, as kingdom builders. So the very plan of initiating a kingdom and having us as people who are to uh, rule and govern and subdue uh, and have dominion over God's kingdom here on earth was God's plan even before the foundations of the earth and he brought that about when he created Adam and Eve and gave them that authority but when that authority was given to Satan you know when Jesus died on the cross one of the things that he took back is the keys of the authority and he's given that to the church so you and I as saints believers in the church have um who are part of the kingdom, have this kingdom authority. And the kingdom authority is in us. So wherever we go, we carry kingdom power, we carry kingdom authority. Uh, we also have to order our lives in kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture, kingdom thinking. So wherever we go, uh, you know, we are uh, uh, initiating the kingdom of God through our 
living, our culture, our lifestyle, our moral standards. And, uh, you know, the kingdom of God is a pervasive kingdom. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is like the mustard seed. It's small. We can be very small, but it can be very powerful. You know, uh, the kingdom of God is like, uh, uh, or the kingdom of heaven is like that leaven, uh, which is very small, that yeast, when it's put into the Tao, it just changes the whole Tao, right? Uh, so that that is how pervasive the kingdom of God is. So wherever we go, we carry the kingdom of God with us. Wherever we go, we can, uh, we can, um, uh, impact our environment, the world, our situation with uh, the, uh, you know, kingdom power, kingdom authority, kingdom rule, kingdom reign of God can just infiltrate, can just come in uh, wherever uh, we are because we are um, uh, carriers of the kingdom of God. It is in us. So, you know, you need to be mindful of what you have been given authority to who you are in Christ and, you know, that uh, you can speak to any and every situation. You can speak kingdom authority, kingdom reign, kingdom rule, kingdom presence, kingdom power into your marriage, into your children's lives, in your job place, you know, and, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 into your finances and you can see God come through because God's kingdom is powerful. It invades every sphere of our uh, society, every area of our lives. Does that help, Sobhagya? Yes, okay. So we'll move on. Um, uh, dreams to dreams, God also alerts us and warns us, okay? Um, so the wise men, after visiting Jesus, they, you know, uh, through a dream, uh, they were warned not to go back to King Herod, uh, who intended to kill the child, but to return back to their uh, own country to a different route or a different route. Okay. Uh, and uh, in the life of Joseph, uh, in Matthew chapter 2, uh, you know, Joseph was warned in two dreams, first to flee to Egypt, uh, to escape uh, Herod's massacre of infants. And later he was also warned the dream um, to settle in Nazareth instead of returning back to uh, Judea. Okay. So these are a few examples from the Bible that we can see how, you know, God uses uh, dreams um, uh, to speak to us. And why does he use the dreams to speak to us? Uh, I've just mentioned all of those areas. Okay. So even as God speaks to us through dreams, uh, what should we do? We should be open to receiving dreams from God. Okay, so one of the things that you can pray is before you go to sleep, you can say God, you can pray and say, God, uh, I consecrate my mind. I consecrate every activity in my mind, even as I'm asleep. And God, uh, speak to me, you know, uh, through visions and dreams in the night. If you want to counsel me, direct me, lead me, correct me, uh, encourage me, alert me, you know, whatever, or uh, warn me about the future, reveal the future, God, speak to me. You know, I'm open. So when we're doing that, you know, uh, God can, will uh, speak to us uh, through dreams. You now, some people, God speaks to us through dreams. Some people, God speaks to us through different ways. So if we don't get, uh, uh, you know, guidance uh, through dreams, don't be heartbroken that God does not love you. No, he does very much. Uh, you're very special to him, you know, uh, but he chooses to speak to you in uh, different ways. Okay. Okay. Uh, while some dreams can be literally understood, you can just see the dream in the night, you can understand very clearly what God is telling you. Some dreams can be very figurative, it can have symbols, uh, you know, so you need to interpret it. So what you can do is when you wake up in the morning, write down your dreams, even if you're not able to understand them, just write whatever you saw, uh, keep it, you know, later on, when those dreams come to pass, you can you know, ting tong, it can ring a bell, you know, you can go back, read it, you can understand. Also, you can ask and pray because God has given you those dreams. The Holy Spirit uh, reveals the truth to us. He guides us, he teaches us, he reveals, uh, uh, you know, what God is telling us. He takes what is the plans and the heart and mind of God, he reveals it to us. You can ask the Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, tell me what is uh, the meaning or the understanding of these dreams, okay? Or you can also study the Bible, uh, you know, what each color signifies, the numbers that are there, you know, you can read it, 
but be very careful when you're interpreting. Don't misinterpret. You need to interpret it in the right context in the rest of the uh, uh, entirety of uh, scripture. Okay. If you don't understand those dreams, just journal them, write them down, you know, God will speak and use uh, that later on. You can always go back and see how God has spoken to you and that will encourage you. Then we'll move on to visions. Yes, Ch yes Shani. Um, I have a question mm -hmm. um, in terms of like correct and align us and maybe um, alert and warn us. I know in terms of Bimelech with um, Sarah, how do you really know in terms of when you're being corrected like the dream that he had, that he was going to be a, a dead man. How do you really know if that's really God or the, I can see the devil trying to do that to put in that in people's dreams. How do you know that's not a nightmare? Because to me, it would seem like if somebody's going to tell you you're going to be a dead man, that doesn't sound like the Lord. To me, that sounds like it's the devil. So how do you really know, especially for correcting the line also, I can see it kind of happening for alarm, alarm and a warrant. I mean, to, to alert and a warrant, especially if something bad is going to happen. We think it's a devil and also reveal secret things. How do you really know? Yeah, good question. So here in, you need to see things in context, right? Here, uh, King uh, 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 Ahimelech, uh, you know, Abimelech, he has taken uh, Sarah and he wants to, you know, uh, take her as his wife because she's very beautiful and he does not know he's ignorant of the fact that it's he she is Abraham's wife because Abraham lied to him okay and she he sees her as very beautiful and you know as a king he has a right to you know he sees any beautiful woman to take her as his wife uh, but here God warns him in his dream telling that you know he is not to marry. So the context is right. You can't say it's a it's it's a devil because if it's a devil, the devil will say, "Hey, marry her." You know, don't wait. Why are you waiting for so long? You know, you marry her quickly. You know, uh, so here the context is right. He's saying, you know, uh, uh, send her away, return her back to Abraham. Don't marry her. You know, because if you do, you will you will die. So, you know. Uh, so it's it's quite evident from the situation that yes, this is God, and if it's it's if it's uh, 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 that is why I said you know is it glorifying God? Is this is something that is something righteous. He returned this woman back to a husband because you know she is his wife, and he did not know that. So isn't that the truth? If it was a lie, the enemy, then you know that, you know, it's not glorifying what is right and righteous. And so, you know, it's from the enemy and not from God. Okay, I think, I, okay, I understand. I think you're saying that in the, in the end, whenever you get like a dream, if, if it's if it's not glorifying God, then you, I mean, I mean, sorry, as long as it's glorifying God, you know, it's from the, it's from the, it's from the Lord, not the devil just giving you a nightmare. Yes. And okay. if it's come God, it's something that is righteous, pure, and holy, and getting you to do the right thing. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next one, visions. Okay. Um, a simple and basic way to differentiate between dreams and vision is that dreams happen when one is asleep. Okay. And vision happens when one is awake. So both in dreams and visions, you know, we are seeing something, we are receiving a message from God, you know, uh, whether it's through visuals, uh, something that is pictorial, but it's something that we are uh, seeing. But, you know, um, uh, dreams happen when we are asleep. You know, and vision happens when we are awake. Okay. So the inner witness comes through impressions. What we feel, we can just feel, uh, but we can feel like, you know, God is speaking to us, but it's just a feeling. The inner voice comes through words. We can hear it. And visions comes through visuals, what we uh, see. Okay. Uh, and we must also be open to God speaking to us through uh, visions. So there are numerous examples of people seeing um, uh, visions, you know, um, uh, just a few examples. 
is, uh, you know, Abraham's vision where he, uh, you know, God appeared to him in a vision in Genesis chapter 15 and assures him not to fear, promising him that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Okay, so this is a vision that is reaffirming God's covenant with Abraham, despite God telling him that he would have a son in his old age and he was still childless at that time. Okay, uh, we also see Jacob's vision in Genesis chapter 46. He received a vision which God spoke to him, telling him not to be afraid uh, to go down to Egypt and that God would make him uh, into a great nation and his descendants as well over uh, there. And so this vision, uh, you know, gave uh, Jacob the guidance and the assurance that he needed at that uh, moment. Okay, uh, Samuel's vision in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 15, you know, Samuel was a young boy. He received his first prophetic uh, vision from God, which foretold the judgment on the house of Eli. And so, you know, this marked Samuel's calling as a prophet and basically set the course of his um, uh, future uh, ministry as well. Okay, so just a few examples over there. Uh, so in a vision, we can see uh, angels like Daniel saw and, you know, Mary um, uh, so you know, uh, saw so uh, the, the the angel Gabriel. Um, also, you know, we can see in in visions, we can see into the uh, spiritual uh, realm. Okay, um, uh, like uh, Second Kings, I think it was Elijah or Elisha. I don't know when they were going to fight a battle, and uh, the servant, I think it was Elisha, and a servant came uh, to. Um, uh, you know, uh, to them and said, you know, the armies have come to fight against us. And, you know, what are we supposed to uh, uh, do? And, uh, you know, the prophet uh, tells him, uh, you know, uh, uh, God reveals the prophet uh, ahead of time. Uh, yes, it is Elisha, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, reveals to him that, um, uh, you know, that, um, uh, a heavenly host of army just going to, you know, uh, God is sending that army to uh, fight uh, against them. But, you know, um, uh, the servant was not able to uh, see this, but Elisha was able to see it. And then he prays and say, God, open his eyes that he may uh, see. And so God opens his eyes and the young man sees and he sees the mountains are full of horses, of chariots, of fire all around uh, Elisha. So it was basically the heavenly hosts, angelic armies that had come uh, to fight uh, for uh, the nation of um, uh, or the people of uh, Israel. Okay. Another example is in Second Kings chapter two, where uh, you know uh, Elisha uh, uh, sees uh, Elijah just taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. He uh, 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 witnesses this uh, miraculous event, um, and then uh, he says, you know, uh, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen, and and then you know he sees no more. And, uh, you know, uh, so he sees into the heavenly um, realm. So all these can be true, you know, uh, people seeing uh, visions. They're not sleeping. They're awake. They're wide awake. Like in case of Eli uh, Elisha and Elijah and, uh, you know, the servant, you know, they see into the spiritual realm. Okay. There are times when people can see into other locations in the natural realm, okay, um, and uh, uh, and people have also seen uh, into heaven, like um, uh, a case. Uh, heaven is Acts chapter seven, where uh, Stephen, you know, sees heaven open, and uh, you know, the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God, and that is when you know the people cry out, blasphemy, blasphemy, and they stone. Um, uh, uh, Stephen. Okay. Uh, uh, another thing that we can see is also people have seen uh, into uh, other locations in the uh, natural um, realm. So, you know, um, the story of Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5, you know, the, uh, the commander of the Syrian army, he had leprosy um, and um, you know, uh, he comes to uh, Elisha, to comes all the way to Israel because the servant girl who is from Israel tells him there is a prophet who can heal him. So he comes and after being 
cured. Naaman, you know, offers uh, gifts to Elisha, uh, you know, money and uh, uh, clothing and all that as a token of his gratitude. But Elisha refuses to accept them uh, because, you know, he says that, you know, God has told him not to uh, take that gift. But uh, Elisha's greedy servant Gehazi, when he hears that, he's saying, oh, my master is so foolish. He could have at least taken some clothes and some, you know, money. So when Naaman leaves and goes, Gehazi runs behind him and, you know, uh, he asks, uh, you know, says, you know, my, uh, my master has some people come in, so please give us some clothing. And uh, so uh, Naaman gives him and he takes it to his house. He keeps it there. And then he goes back to uh, Elisha. When he goes back to Elisha, Elisha confronts him and asks him, hey, where have you been? He says, nowhere, my master. And then he says, you know, um, uh, because you've been greedy, the same leprosy that has caught on to uh, Naaman will catch you and he becomes leprous that very uh, moment. So how did um, uh, Elisha know? Through a vision, he would have seen what was happening, you know, when Gehazi ran uh, ahead, you know, went and met Naaman and uh, took those things from him, okay? So even through visions, God can guide us, direct us, um, uh, we see in the book of Acts, there are several visions that people see and how God provided uh, guidance and direction to his uh, uh, people. Okay. And now there are different kinds of visions we see in scripture um, and they can be broadly char characterized um, as spiritual vision, uh, you know, as a trance and open vision. Uh, but having said that, you know, um, uh, again, we don't put God in a box. We just cannot confine him to only these things. Uh, these are just for our learning, um, but we must just be open to more ways in how God can communicate and speak to us, encourage us, warn us, guide us, and direct us. So we just look at uh, the different uh, categories of vision. It can be spiritual vision. This is the most common that uh, believers have where God reveals things to us uh, and we see things through the eyes of our uh, spirit man. Uh, just to give you a few examples in the book of Acts, you know, um, Saul encountered uh, uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus and then now he's in Damascus and God, uh, you know, directs Ananias, another believer in a vision to go to Saul. So he's seeing everything and Acts chapter 9, God is telling him, arise, go to a street called Straight Street and inquire of this person called um, Saul of Tarsus who's staying in the house of Judas and, you know, um, uh, uh, and God is showing him that you know, Tars uh, Paul is there in that house praying. So in a vision, you know, um, uh, 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 the um, the Lord tells him also, tells Ananias that, you know, uh, in a vision that uh, Paul or Saul has also seen a man called Ananias coming in and putting and laying his hands on him that he might receive sight. So here is a spiritual vision that both Ananias and uh, Saul are having. Ananias is seeing a straight street, a road called straight street, the house of Judas, man called Saul there, he's praying. And si same time, in a vision, Saul is praying and he's seeing um, a vision of how a person called Ananias is coming and laying hands on him so that he might receive back his um, sight. Okay. Uh, and then another, other example of a, a spiritual vision is what I've already mentioned, and I'm not going to speak about it. In Acts chapter 16, verse 9 and 10, about Paul seeing the vision of a man from uh, Macedonia. Okay. So these are um, spiritual visions which most of us receive and see. Then there are another kind of vision uh, that we can categorize vision as is trance. Um, in a trance, what happens is a person, you know, for a temporary period of time, lose consciousness of the world around them. And they are seeing a spiritual vision or something in the spiritual uh, realm. So they lose consciousness of things around them and they're seeing things in the spiritual uh, realm. For example, Acts chapter 10, you know, um, uh, Peter is uh, hungry. And he goes to the rooftop to pray while food is being cooked for him. And, you know, um, he's, he, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's very hungry. Then he is waiting for cook, food to be cooked. At that time, he falls into a, 
uh, trance. And what does he see? He sees heaven open and he sees a big great sheet with four corners and then uh, you know uh, just descending on him down to the earth and all kind of four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts and all creeping things of the ground and the birds of the air and then there's a voice that tells him peter uh, uh, rise up kill and eat and peter said no lord all these are you know, unclean things i cannot eat them and then uh, the voice of God spoke to him a second time uh, and God told him, said, you know, what God has uh, uh, cleansed or made clean, you shall not call common. OK, so this was done three times and then the object was taken up to uh, heaven. Now, Peter did not understand the meaning of the stream, but then, you know, he hears the Holy Spirit speaking to him, telling him, hey, Peter, go down. Three men are waiting with you. Just go with them. So. When he goes to Cornelius' house, you know, and he, he uh, there are Gentiles, all uh, Gentiles just uh, uh, gathered in Cornelius' house. Peter is a Jew, you know, and he's preaching there. And before he gives an altar call and all that, these people were cut to their heart. They received the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And they're already baptized in the Holy Spirit. So how do we know they're baptized in the Holy Spirit? Peter knows it only when they spoke in tongues. And they were shocked because, hey, they thought it was only for the Jews and here there are Gentiles who are speaking uh, in tongues and the gift of the Spirit is given to them as well. And that's when scripture says that Peter understood the meaning of the uh, dream. Okay, so that is a, a trance where you... Uh, lose consciousness of the natural world you see into the spiritual vision uh, into the spiritual realm and this can happen when you are uh, praying you're praying for somebody else and uh, god is showing you uh, things then you can have open vision uh, where you don't see any pictures or visuals very clearly uh, yeah, sorry there is uh, where you don't see pictures or visuals but you very uh, clearly see in the spiritual realm okay uh, uh, and when you see, how do you differentiate this between a trance? A trance is you lose consciousness of the world around you, but in an open vision, just like a trance, you see into the spiritual realm, but you are also aware of the natural world around you. So that is a difference. Trance, you don't are not aware of the natural world. You lose consciousness of the natural world. But open vision, you are able to be aware of the natural world around you. An example is the transfiguration. Uh, Peter, James, and John, you know, uh, we, they see Jesus transfigured before them. They were aware of things around them, but they also see uh, things in the spiritual realm. Another example is Acts chapter 10, you know, uh, Cornelius, um, you know, uh, the centurion, uh, who is a very devout man, who Peter, uh, Peter goes to his house and, uh, uh, you know, preaches there. You know, at the ninth hour, he sees a vision of an angel coming to him and saying, Cornelius, you know, and he says, what is it, Lord? And he says, your prayers and arms have come up uh, uh, as a memorial before God. So he's, uh, it says here that he clearly in a vision sees an angel. OK, so he's seeing into the heavenly uh, realm and he very clearly sees the uh, uh, the angel okay and then uh, 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 God tells him what he needs to do to send men to you know to Peter's house who's staying with uh, Simon the Tanner house by the sea and uh, you know uh, uh, God tells him he will tell Peter what needs to be done so so here Peter is having a trance that Cornelius you know before that Cornelius has this um, uh, you know, this, um, uh, this open vision and how beautifully God, uh, you know, takes the gospel to the uh, Gentiles through uh, this trance and this vision that Peter and Cornelius has. There are times when we can also travel in visions, your spirit and your soul and body uh, can travel uh, in a vision, uh, it's geographical areas, or, or you can also, you know, travel you know, into the past or into your uh, future, but, you know, you're just seeing it in your spirit, soul, uh, uh, your body are in one place, but you are just traveling to another geographical uh, area. And uh, one example is uh, Ezekiel. And I think another example can be uh, Jesus as well in his temptation, where he was there in the wilderness, but, you know, Oh, that was, uh, yeah, that's not something that is traveling in a vision, but he just uh, sees that 
you know, um, uh, sees himself on top of the mountain or the pinnacle of the temple. But here you will be traveling to, uh, you know, geographical uh, area uh, in the future or something, something in the uh, past. Okay. Or sometimes you're transported in your spirit. You know, it's where your spirit leaves your body and travels. Um, and you know, and uh, and you're able to observe things in the natural and the uh, spiritual world. For example, you know, Paul was caught up in the third heavens, and John was also caught up in heaven, and he was able to see uh, things in heaven. And he writes about that. Uh, he writes everything that he sees in in his book. Uh, the uh, in uh, in his book, what he writes, uh, Revelation. Okay, so here in that case, he his. Uh, spirit uh, leaves the body and travels and observes things in the natural and the spiritual world okay so even as we looked at dreams and visions you know god speaks to us through these ways but we need to be open receptive to what god is speaking to us okay yes shani so it's a difference in traveling and visions and transport and spirit so Traveling and vision can be um, your spirit goes in the past or the future, but the transporting spirit can be um, the present time. Is that is that what it is? I'm kind of a little bit confused the difference between the two. Okay, traveling and visions is when your spirit, soul, and body are in one place, but you are traveling in a vision uh, geographically to another place, or also you know into the past and into the future. Okay. Uh, transporting in the spirit is when your spirit leaves your body and it travels and you are able to observe things in the natural and spiritual world. So that is a difference. Okay. I'm mad to ask you that next week after I review it. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So here in, in transporting in the spirit is when your spirit is actually being transported to another place. But in the in the uh, in traveling in visions is your spirit is not going anywhere spirit soul and body is just there but you are able to just see a vision where you seem to be uh, traveling to another geographical area it can be something that uh, has happened in the past or something that you're looking at your future where god is going to uh, take you it's oh, just okay, i understand it's just oh, okay just a vision the, the actual transport spirit actual transport just like like I'm in California, I can travel to East Spirit and go to India or something like that. And this, is that kind of like, okay. Yes, uh, but you're just okay. there. You are but in the U.S. Your, your, your physical body, yeah, but your spirit can go somewhere. Okay. Okay. Your, spirit, your physical body, soul, spirit is there in U.S., but you in your dream as, or your vision is being, uh, you're seeing yourself in India. Okay. But when you're traveling in transport in the spirit, your, sp your body is here in the U.S., but your spirit has traveled to India. Okay, okay, I understand yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Saubagya, uh, uh, we'll just close with Saubagya's question. If some of you want to leave, please feel free to. Sometimes our family members who are already dead come in a dream and it's like disturbing. Is it them or demons coming in their faces? Whether we have to pray about it. Yeah, it can be sometimes, you know, uh, it can be demons using them to, you know, trouble us, bother us and things like that. Uh, you know, uh, so what you need to do is just pray and ask God. Sometimes I also said dreams can be things that, you know, we have been thinking about that person. We have been grieving, sorrowing because of our love, uh, loss of our loved one. And, you know, uh, it can be our own mind. I said dreams comes from God, but also things that are occupying our mind. So it has been occupying our mind. So the dream is coming. Or sometimes we are so caught, you, you know, caught up in this whole uh, uh, thing of grief, which is a stronghold, and Satan uses that to torment us. And so, on. so you can just pray and break those strongholds and bondages. And, you know, uh, yeah, you can just uh, pray for God's peace to come over you and just give up, you know, the whole grief can be something that can become a stronghold in itself. So just ask God to help you to overcome the grief in your life. That it helps, Abhagya? Okay. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class today. Have a blessed uh, day and I'll see you next week. Thank you.